This video might be a surprise since I usually make hours long videos about a variety of immersive sims and other games, but a few years ago on this channel I was on a real urban planning kick. I talked about SimCity 2000 which is still my favorite city builder 30 years after it hit shelves. I talked about how 2013 SimCity sized up against city skylines, and I talked about the real impact that people can have on their cities that city building games don't model. I even talked about what future city building games need because nowhere in reality does city leadership just sit at a computer and paint khaki landscapes with roads and zones. No, I haven't played City Skylines 2, don't at me. At the same time I was doing all that, I was starting to get into actual advocacy in my own hometown of Colorado Springs. So I started watching urban planning and transit oriented YouTube channels because I wanted to understand the work that needed to be done, especially around pedestrian access and public transit. As they say on the internet, I was orange pilled by not just bikes, the Canadian transit advocate who moved to the Netherlands, a world model of multimodal transit. Many of us have been activated by his snarky, often angry commentary about how bad North American cities are and how developing or destroying cities for cars has made things so much worse for people and all forms of traffic, even cars. I've watched almost every single episode of City Beautiful, which provides historical context around how cities used to be more walkable and livable, with colorful graphics made possible thanks to Brilliant. Get your first 30 days of Brilliant free by using offer code and if you've spent more than 30 minutes ingesting this kind of content, you know who Chuck Marone and Strong Towns are. You know what effective bicycle infrastructure should look like, and the pain of not having high-speed rail to zip between municipalities. You pine for when many American cities used to have trolleys. Inspired by these channels and some local advocates I got to talk to on a podcast I used to run, I bought a bike a year ago and learned a lot of ins and outs about bicycle transit too. Induced demand, multimodal transit, mixed-use zoning, missing middle, parking minimums, road dieting, car dependency, and many more terms have become the go-to jargon of these channels and those who watch them. And that's where Urbanist YouTube has a big problem. In seeking a more active role in my community, going down the Urbanist YouTube rabbit hole has really bulked up on my understanding of urban planning theory and practice. If one more person recommends I read Jane Jacobs, I'm going to explode. It's shown me what effective traffic calming and bike infrastructure should look like. No city is perfect, but it's not hard to understand how and why these things come together and how that pairs with the rising number of pedestrian fatalities in the years post-COVID. If we could just do something about it in our own cities, we'd be saving lives not just from the increasingly larger vehicles consuming our roads and killing our neighbors, but improving health outcomes by making active transportation, like walking and bicycling, more attractive. But over the years, the number of these urbanist channels has grown to the extent that many are just singing the same notes as everyone else in this new urbanist echo chamber. So I wondered, do I even need to make this video? I mean, there are already lots of research papers, articles, and videos about all of this all over the internet. Some by people much more educated on this topic than me, but apparently, yes, I do. Historical context is great. Urban terminology is fine. Understanding what effective multimodal transit and properly densified zoning are fantastic, but what isn't fantastic is reality. And this is the chasm where so many YouTubers leave their viewers at. Okay, so you want to make your city better. You know what fixtures your city should have. You know what your city should look like. But do you actually know what to do with that knowledge? What these YouTube channels fail to engage with is where the top level urban planning lingo meets the figurative pavement civic engagement. As a member of my town's Citizens Transportation Advisory Board, which provides messaging and guidance for our city council, as someone who was a 2023 Colorado Springs Mayor's Civic Leaders Fellow, as someone who loves my city and wants to see it get better, I'm surprised at how many of these channels completely omit this critical function of urban planning and transit advocacy. You know, the part where you actually have to do stuff. In a way, urbanist YouTube has given terminology to a kind of slacktivism that involves identifying problems, 
but then not educating people on how to make urbanist principles a reality. I made this video for two reasons. I'll get back to the first, but the second is a video by Strong Towns about whether or not you should stay in your city and try to make a difference now that you're cursed with the knowledge of what an ideal urban environment looks and functions like. As the video progressed, I was really, really hoping that he would talk with actual city officials, the people who actually do the urban planning and development. Instead, it focused on small local groups that are affiliated with Strong Towns, which is a non-profit. These groups meet in coffee shops and do guerrilla acts of urbanism, like painting lanes and parking spots to diet roads, because they don't think their local governments move quick enough. Tiny groups can paint all the crosswalks they want, but they're not going to pour concrete to finish a sidewalk next to a fast arterial road that's known to kill pedestrians. They're not going to add a bike lane to a thoroughfare or establish a bus route out to an unserved portion of the city, things that are a problem in a huge sprawly town like mine. They're not going to contribute to municipal master plans from the back of a Chipotle, nor the various code and zoning documents that governments use to actually define what the built environment should look and function like. These channels only seem to glance at the importance of civic engagement, much less understand it, much less recommend it. So why don't these channels engage in the hugely critical middle step between learning what a strode is and how to actually build the urban environment that we want? Why are so many urbanism fans on YouTube completely uneducated on how you actually remove the car dependent way of thinking that's killing our cities and disintegrating our communities one 4,000 pound SUV at a time? For one thing, it's boring. If you drop into a random city meeting, you're going to have to understand a yawning amount of introductions, Robert's rules of order, slow procedural stuff, and more. Well, Mr. President, it, it's not in the motion. The withdrawal term terminology is not in the motion. For two, it's very verbose and technical. It's literally why people go to school for this stuff. Something you'll experience in urbanist YouTube is that few of these creators are actually urban or traffic planning professionals, except maybe Dave at City Beautiful or Ray at City Nerd. These other non-professional creators, including Not Just Bikes and myself, are enthusiasts and fans, and we may know some key lingo, but we're not in the bureaucratic murk fighting battles day to day. Something as simple as adding a bike lane becomes a thousand times more difficult when you understand how it actually gets done and how many people react to the proposal. Effective urbanism is far more than just transit, and while people seem to think that effective multimodal transit is the turnkey solution to resolve all other urban planning issues, it isn't. For three, nimbyism and apathy. Nimbyism, or not in my backyard, is a philosophy that rejects new, important development for a variety of reasons, and it can be very hard to overcome even if it's for the betterment of the city as a whole. Here in Colorado Springs, people protest anything that can possibly even slightly obstruct our view of the mountains, which was not something that General Palmer coded into our city charter. That's an urban myth. Setting aside the fact that the hills here obstruct the mountains plenty in this town, and there are already plenty of tall buildings, you can look at this photo I took of downtown Colorado Springs from Memorial Hospital nearby and see how much they don't obstruct the view at all. Um, you know, unless you're downtown. You can talk with peers about strodes all you want. Organization is very necessary. But none of that means anything when NIMBYs are showing up at every city council meeting where you live to shout down what you believe on the actual record. They're also the people running for and getting elected into positions that dictate city priorities. The average person only tends to engage in city processes when they don't want something, not when they do, and typically only when it's hyper-local to their neighborhood. My city asks for public input all the time for huge projects that will affect neighborhoods for generations to come, and whether it's a lack of communications on the part of the city, even though they physically mail everyone in the neighborhood, or it's apathy, or any of the reasons we just talked about, these meetings are usually empty. A huge park that's set to be built on our east side got feedback from about 
a thousand people online and only about 150 people from in-person gatherings. 150 or even a thousand people in a city of half a million isn't great. Unfortunately, voter turnout when it comes to local issues versus turnout during presidential election years, an office that has next to nothing to do with how your city operates, is abysmal. City meetings and ballot boxes are where urbanist advocates need to show up in force if they want to get any meaningful change accomplished. Seriously, urbanists could win elections and change the shape of their cities just by getting five of their friends to vote for them in off-year races because turnout is usually so terrible. For four, local study. It's easy to understand urbanism in broad, high-level concepts, but what's hard is understanding how it affects your city in particular, because everywhere is different. I can understand how old Colorado City formed just down the hill from gold towns like Cripple Creek, or how our bustling downtown came to be before the vast urban sprawl came when we invited five military installations to set up shop on the fringes of town during and after World War II. Understanding your your city's history is a huge step in understanding how you solve its problems. Urbanist YouTube doesn't talk about this a lot, if at all. Let me ask you something. Who's your city's traffic engineer? Who's your city planner? Who's your city council person? Who's your mayor? Do you even live in a city, which is not always what the postal service says it is? If you don't, who are your county commissioners? If you're not in the United States, like I am, Who's in charge of these decisions? Have you seen a city budget or master plan of which your city should have several depending on size? Do you know what actually funds your ability to build infrastructure or enable services? Is it out of a general fund, state allowance, or a regional sales tax? These are just the top level questions, a few critical things you really need to know to meaningfully advocate for urbanism. Yeah, you can watch Not Just Bikes, he's an entertaining and popular YouTube channel, but do you know who to email when there's something wrong with a trail? Or why yet another car wash was approved for construction? Does your city have an app where you can report potholes like Colorado Springs does? For five, these YouTubers may not actually know how to make things better. It's not even that they're tired of engaging city officials or combing through lengthy bureaucratic documents, it's that the entire topic doesn't pop up at all. It's really easy to believe that so many urbanist content creators may have been orange-pilled either watching a couple of Not Just Bikes videos, read a bunch of Strongtown articles, and are just regurgitating that stuff when they've clearly never been to a city council meeting before. In fact, it's actually kind of annoying when one-note urbanists show up there to deliver the same spiel they give at every other meeting when it's clear they don't engage with the process otherwise. Unfortunately, without some context, some people may want to pursue an urban planning or traffic engineering degree after digesting urbanist YouTube content, not realizing that A, they're probably going to have to move to where the job is needed, and B, your decisions are going to be weighed down by whoever the local politicians are. If you're a YIMBY in a NIMBY administration, expect to get shot down a lot. The thing is, even if you're studying how to implement a better bicycle network or where bus routes should go and how often, it should be easy to see how transit issues bleed into other aspects of your city. Unfortunately, in the bubble of urbanist YouTube, many discussions begin and end with roads, sidewalks, and buildings next to them. But the base unit of a city isn't a road, a sidewalk, or a building. It's the people who live there. There's nothing wrong with specializing in transit advocacy and focusing on cars and bike lanes, but if you look just beyond that, you can engage in the big brain next level discussions that will actually improve your city, even if transit is a part of it. If you understand how people informed urban planning, and how that urban planning sculpted neighborhoods near you to promote things like racism and wealth and health inequalities, you can begin to understand even more complicated things. For some examples, how effective is your local police force and why? Where are your city's food and medical deserts? Does your city have public art? And where is it? Who pays for it? 
Few urbanist YouTubers seem to understand that knowing these things are critical to altering the trajectory of a city, much less advocating for it, especially when the built environment and the social environments that exist on top of it are so immense, old, and established. And this leads me to Jason Slaughter, the creator of Not Just Bikes, and the first reason why I wanted to make this video. Slaughter seems to know what a city needs at its very essence to enact meaningful change and effective regulation over a long period of time. Slaughter's been to and lived in a lot of cities. He's even been an advocate himself. But advocacy tuckered him out and he and his family had the privilege to settle in one final location, the Netherlands, one of the best places in the world to experience effective multimodal transit. I had a very brief interaction with him on Twitter when I did my SimCity vs. City Skylines review, and he seems like a nice guy. But back in July, he posted a series of now-deleted tweets saying that attempting to change urban plans in North America is a completely wasted effort and to not try. Doomerism, basically. As someone who is deep in his advocacy efforts to change my city's fabric for the better, it was a punch in the gut from someone I admired and learned a lot from. Slaughter's knowledge on effective advocacy rarely seems to poke through on his channel, where he maintains a similarly militant tone to his tweets. He gets to enjoy a city where they've already fought and won against the automobile in a decades-long battle that he didn't have to fight in. He gets to preach from an ivory tower and enjoy all the benefits of being a transit refugee with the money and resources to be able to do it. And to be fair, he's always been very transparent that that's always been the point of his channel. But even if Slaughter's tweets didn't permeate through his audience, there are so many fans of his channels who have said that they wish they could just move away from the bad planning and suburban sprawl of the United States or Canada to a Scandinavian paradise where transit advocates there have already done all the hard work. If Slaughter actively believes that advocacy is a dead end, what's the actual point of his channel except to bitch and moan about car dependency in North America? How valuable is that, actually? Advocacy is hard. Showing up for meetings is difficult. Keeping track of your city's machinations, leaders, and schedules is frustrating. I get it. Yet another urbanist is yet another YouTuber who got so frustrated at the car dependency and lack of public transit around him in his hometown of Reno that he also fled for greener pastures. Introducing people to these high-level concepts is a victory, but if even one out of a hundred or one out of a thousand of Not Just Bikes' million plus subscribers went out and took to urban advocacy in a really serious way, that's where you'd actually begin to see the earth move. Literally. I love walking around my city, even if it takes forever to get to most destinations and downtown is a two plus hour hike away. I love biking around my city, even if the only way you're getting to some places is by narrow, broken sidewalks. I love using public transit, where that time is mine to do what I please even if our bus network seems to end where the city did in 1999. Advocating for actual change is a hard ask, but it's necessary because it's an uphill battle. We already have so many NIMBY conspiracies and anti-urbanist misinformation to overcome, like the idea that 15-minute cities are a nefarious scheme by the government to control the masses, or that expensive, rarely used pedestrian bridges are the only way to reduce pedestrian fatalities, or that city buses aren't actually havens for drug use and public defecation. Our cities weren't created as car-dependent nightmares or sprawled out the way they are now, with seas of empty parking lots. We had to spend generations making them this way. At the very least, it's going to take generations to reverse that damage. Unfortunately, many popular urbanist YouTubers aren't using their platforms to tell you how to actually make your neighborhood a better place. They're simply and generically describing the shape of what they should look and function like. This really is a matter of planting trees whose shade you'll never enjoy. And nothing's going to get done if you sit on the internet reposting urbanist tweets. If you want to wean people off using their cars for every single thing that they need to do, you have to build options that are better and more convenient than using a car. If you want to build better neighborhoods, you have to understand the complicated matrix that created those neighborhoods in the first place. Like the fact that downtown Colorado Springs doesn't have many of the amenities needed for a neighborhood, even as it's adding thousands of residential units right now. It's fine to learn the lingo, but it's better to actually show up 
where you live and engage the machinery that makes the actual changes happen. Hell, maybe you can run for office.